Now to Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gurkovich. It's been almost a year since he was arrested while working in Russia. His parents have been fighting to bring him home. And George, you sat down with them for an exclusive interview. Good morning to you again. I did, Robin, just last week. You know, the paper's editor-in-chief joined us as they sat down with Evan's parents, Ella and Mikhail. Evan was detained one year ago this week. And when I talked to them last year, they told me they were hopeful for his release. They say they remain optimistic today. How are you doing? We're still holding up. We have uh, President Biden's uh, promise delivered to us personally and in the State of the Union. We will also work around the clock to bring home Evan and Paul, Americans being unjustly detained by the Russians. And we know that the U.S. government is taking Evan's case very seriously, so we are optimistic. Why was it important for you to go to the State of the Union? It's a sign for us that everybody uh, in the U.S. government, the uh, Senate and Congress and the White House are taking the freedom of the press seriously. It's important. This week marks one year since the 32-year-old was arrested by Russia's security service at a steakhouse restaurant while on a reporting trip. Evan, who is accredited by Russia's foreign ministry to work as a journalist, is being held on charges of espionage. Allegations Evan, the U.S., and the Wall Street Journal firmly deny. He has pled not guilty, and the U.S. State Department has declared him wrongfully detained. Tell me about the efforts that the Wall Street Journal is making on behalf of Evan, both to get him free and to support him inside Russia. Well, in terms of getting Evan free, that's very much a government-to-government -government issue. So our main focus at the journal has been to keep Evan's story front of mind, to remind people that an innocent journalist is in, behind bars in prison for doing his job. What can you tell us about your communications with Evan? Well, we still keep writing letters. You know, Evan tries to protect us. We are trying <laughs> to protect him. And I, I, I read that you're playing long distance chess with him. He's teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> It's a friendly game, it's not a competition, and especially because uh, he is so much better than I am at it. I was amazed to read that he's actually making sure that he sends gifts and you do it for him to all his yes. friends and family around important occasions. Yes, he remembers uh, his friends' birthdays. We received flowers from him for the International Women's Day on March 8th, and he really cares he wants to thank people for their care about him, for keeping his story uh, front and center. In December, the State Department confirmed Russia rejected a proposal that would have included the release of Evan and former Marine Paul Whelan. But Vladimir Putin has recently suggested he could be open to a prisoner swap. What did you think when you heard President Putin discuss the possibility of a trade for Evan? We were happy that uh, both governments have expressed willingness to uh, negotiate. And you're confident, as Ella said, that the Biden administration is doing everything they can right now? Uh, we are confident that they're doing everything they can, and we want them to continue to do that. What more has to happen right now, in your view? Well, obviously, conversations have to keep to continue. I think these hostage deals are always, by their nature, complicated. I mean, talking of chess, they're like chess boards, you know, you move one piece and you edge towards an end game and then another piece moves and, you, you know, you take a backward step. Evan will be released, but it's complicated to get there. There are a lot of different people and governments involved. So I think, you know, we just have to be patient and optimistic, as Ella says. What keeps you optimistic every day? Well, I think if you let the pessimism in, it's uh, the game is over. Our saying in the family is we're moving forward. And moving it sounds forward. like Evan does everything he can to keep your spirits Yes, up. yes, I think for both of us. We uh, exchange those notes that we are moving forward and we want you to keep going. And he says that he's fighting, he's fighting. But you can't wait to have him back on staff. You bet. I mean, we might give him a short amount of time off. <laughs> but you know, this is a reporter with a tremendous amount of knowledge um, about Russia. And one of the problems we have is we, we don't have anyone on the ground in Russia, not just us, but, but virtually no news organizations have anyone on the ground there. And that's the wider issue at stake here. 
Ready for a big celebration when he comes home? Of course. <laughs> I'll be just happy to uh, play a face-to-face -face game of chess with him. <laughs> Even if he loses in the game of chess to Evan. You know, Evan's pretrial detention has already been extended several times. Tomorrow, there's another hearing in a Moscow court where Evan's lawyers are going to once again present their case for his release. Of course, they've argued, along with the U.S. government, uh, that the Russian authorities have presented no evidence to support their espionage allegations. <laughs> Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.